Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> I know that was original. But in this video, I'm going to show you two different types of composting we're going to do. And we're going to get that started right now. Alright guys, so the first method of composting we're going to do is have the chickens do the work for me. Um, we're going to use it for their chicken run bedding and the last time I used bedding for their uh, chicken run was wood chips. I'm not kidding you, it was, they weren't totally broken, they weren't broken down at all I should say, but they weren't fresh either. But I put those wood chips down and within two to three months they turned it into rich black dirt. It's, it's amazing. So this hay obviously is going to break down a lot quicker, maybe within a month I'm hoping. Uh, but what, what my plan here is to keep putting down the uh, hay. Uh, now you don't have to use hay. I mean we could use, uh, I've also used in the past uh, leaf mulch. Uh, I have a leaf vacuum and I sucked up the leaves around my property put it in there and that worked out great. That didn't last that long though either. The wood chips obviously are harder to break down. That lasted not quite three months. The leaf mulch lasted maybe two. So I'm thinking this is probably gonna last a month, maybe a tad more if that. Um, so those are the type of materials to put in your chicken run. And the, the whole plan here is that soil is building and turning to rich, dark, black, nutrient-dense <coughs> nutrient dense soil <laughs> that I'm going to be using in my garden. So we are in spring right now. This is April. Um, they are going to work all this hay down uh, during the summer. And in fall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape off maybe five or six inches of that topsoil in there. And I'm going to get that and uh, put it in the uh, garden in the fall and work that in the soil and let it do its magic through the winter and then by springtime that soil is going to be super rich nutrient dense soil for the garden. Um, so now let me break this bale of hay open here and let's start putting it in there.
Okay, you're probably thinking I put a little too much in here, but not really. Okay, I'm joking. <laughs> so, there is about a foot, roughly, of fluffy hay in here. Now, this here will, you know, once it gets wet, it rains, they start doing their things, scratching, this will turn into nothing. Uh, it's kind of like spinach, you know, it's all nice and fluffy, and then when you cook it and eat it, there's not much there, it looks like. <laughs> Same deal here. So, uh, this again will turn into nothing. I still have more than a half a bale of hay left. Uh, so this is gonna last, uh, this beer itself won't last too long at all. Uh, they're a little scared because they never seen this stuff before. <laughs> this is like a new environment now for them. So they're all freaked out and hiding in there. Uh, but they'll start exploring in a little bit and, uh, and they'll realize it's not so bad after all. So as far as seed germination, any seed that does germinate in this hay uh, will be soon eaten by the chickens. So I think it'll be a perfect system. The uh, chickens will uh, scratch and it'll break all this stuff down and it'll soon become rich, nutrient dense dirt from my garden and the seeds should be all taken care of. All right guys, this might be categorized as the dumb chicken toys but we will see <laughs> dumb chicken toys I tried <laughs> All right, guys, so what we have here is about, uh, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, seven or eight buckets of chicken manure, okay? And we have hay. So what we want to do here is I'm going to build, I'm going to put a layer of hay in this area right here. And then I'm going to sprinkle in some chicken manure. And then we're going to put another layer of hay, more chicken manure, another layer in chicken manure, kind of like a lasagna deal. And... We're gonna let, and, we're, and then we're gonna wet it down pretty good. What that's gonna do is activate all the bacteria that's in the hay, all the junk that's in the uh, chicken manure, and they're gonna start decomposing all this hay. Now you don't have to use just hay; you can use grass clippings, uh, wood chips, uh, leaves around the yard, whatever you have, anything that's uh, organic material that you have around your property, just throw it in there. Um, well, that will start doing, of course, the bacteria will start eating away at this. And as long as you keep it wet, not soaking wet, but just wet and moist, um, and you got that pile built up pretty good, um, the bacteria will do their thing and it'll start heating up in there. And once you get, it, it can get temperatures anywhere between, a, between 130 to 170 even. Uh, but right in the 140 degree range uh, Fahrenheit, uh, the seeds that are in there will just get be destroyed. Um, but in the meantime, the bacteria will start breaking all this down and uh, convert it into nice, rich compost. And that's what we're going to do here. Uh, so I got the chickens doing my work, and I got uh, the bacteria here doing 
the job of composting this pile. Um, so let's get started with uh, the first layer and then we're going to put manure and another layer of hay and manure and just keep going until we get a nice pile. Alright guys, so we're going to wet this down a little bit. This is only a couple layers so far, but we're going to get it wet, get the bacteria going here. Uh, so I'm going to keep adding more layers, more manure. I found two more buckets in my shed that were hiding uh, of manure. So that's a big plus there. And we're just going to keep on going, getting it wet, keep adding more, getting it wet, and until we can get to pretty big. Alright guys, that is it for this compost pile. Um, I ended up putting 10 buckets of manure. I found two more in my shed. A total of 10 buckets in here. And again, you saw it was like a lasagna, layer, manure, layer of hay, manure, um, until I finished it all up. Um, this, within a, a few weeks, uh, will really start heating up and composting if not sooner um, I'm hoping within a month or two within that range uh, this will be done but uh, I'm no expert at this um, I like to get a uh, compost thermometer and stick that in there to see what the core temperature is we're shooting for 140 degrees not absolutely necessary to have a, a thermometer but it's nice to have it so you can really check on it and see what's going on in there but every week or two, uh, I'm sorry, every week or twice a week, uh, we need to get, I need to get my tractor and fluff this up. We need to get that oxygen in there and keep that aerobic bacteria going. You don't want anaerobic, uh, it'll get slimy and stinky in there. Um, so yeah, we need to fluff it up, get it full of oxygen, oxygenate it, and get the aerobic bacteria going. And uh, that way, the outside here. Well, obviously the inside is going to compost first rather than the outside. So that's why you got to keep on flipping it too and get the oxygen in there. Um, and once this is all composted and ready, we're going to put it in our garden beds this fall. And our leafy greens uh, that will be, will be growing through the uh, winter, like our kales and stuff like that, they will benefit from it. Uh, but by uh, springtime, that garden will be, that dirt will be nutrient dense and ready for planting. Um, 
So that is about it, guys. Um, I'll keep you updated on what's going on uh, in a couple of weeks, probably, and see. Um, this is I'm six foot tall, so this is a little taller than me. Um, within a couple of weeks, I'm assuming this is going to go down quite a bit, uh, because right now it's nice and fluffy. And again, I'll keep you updated what's going on. And um, all right, guys. So please like, subscribe, and share. And when you su uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That will alert you to a new video. And again, thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video.